Hi, Snail Movie here. Today I'll show you a collection of medical series. These stories feature incredible moments, such as a 600-pound man being saved by a single fart and a girl with a 10-meter-long worm inside her stomach. Brace yourselves for visually stunning scenes. Spoiler ahead. Watch out and take care. A 10-meter-long bug inside her belly. But she has no clue how it got there. She ended up in the hospital after a car accident, and when the doctor was disinfecting her wound, the girl acted like it hurt a lot. But it was precisely this normal reaction that made House suspect something abnormal. He insisted that the girl was faking the pain because he deduced from various details that she had painlessness, but the girl adamantly denied it. Next moment, House whacked the girl's leg with a cane, and surprise, she didn't react at all. Then the doctor tried poking her with a needle, and even scalding her with boiling water until blisters formed all over her hands. But the girl remained completely oblivious. Finally, the doctor decided to drill into her skull with an electric drill. And still, no reaction. After conducting many examination, it was determined that she had a deficiency of vitamin B12. It turned out that a 10-meter-long bug inside her body had been consuming the vitamin B12. Without delay, a surgical procedure was performed to remove the bug. This dude with his frickin' brain hanging outside his head dot but for him it's old news. He's been dealing with this freaky condition for 16 damn years. But guess what? He's finally about to get a whole new lease on life cause he's headed to the hospital for surgery. And get this, the whole freaking procedure is gonna be filmed by some TV crew. Making it a full-on horror documentary, just before the surgery kicks off, DR steps in front of the camera and starts spilling the beans about the dude's messed up condition. This poor guy's got his brain bulging out of his forehead like some messed up sci-fi flick. Shit's gnarly man. But just as doctor finishes his little intro and is about to dive into the surgery, all hell breaks loose. The dude's heart rate goes through the freaking roof, and he's hit with some crazy-ass ventricular fibrillation. The doc's gotta scramble to save his ass, and the brain correction surgery gets put on hold, like right freaking there. This dude can't stop sniffing around women like a total freak. But hold up. Turns out he's actually a doctor and diagnosing her. The poor lady have no clue what the hell's going on. Cause she is covered in these funky ass red rashes. A flight attendant comes over. Three more passengers just got infected. Here's the kicker. This bald dude in first class starts puking his guts out like there's no tomorrow. But Dr. House thinks this dude's just hammered, so he ain't gonna waste his time dealing with a drunk idiot, he switches seats like it's nobody's business. But hold up. Just as he settles in, the chick in front of him starts barfing too. And get this, she's got those same damn rashes all over her. It's like a freaking copycat situation. After some hardcore investigation, turns out most folks were having this crazy thing called stress-induced transformation. Dr. House digs into this dude's wallet. A freaking scuba diving pick. Turns out this dude went diving right before his flight. The rapid decompression screwed him up big time. And now Mr. Baldy is on the verge of croaking. All we gotta do is crank down the oxygen levels on the plane. And he'll be good to go. There's this massive body, weighing over 600 caddy and these firefighters are trying to lift it up. But damn. A loud fart blasts the scene, and it's so rank that nobody can even handle lifting the dude. Nobody wants to own up to letting out that epic fart. Can dead people even rip one? But the captain ain't buying it. He quickly checks the dude's heartbeat. Then he goes full on detective mode, slips his hand into the guy's pants, and feels for a pulse. This fat dude is still alive. So they rush his big ass to the hospital. They reach the hospital, and the fat dude is still out cold. The doc needs to run some tests. So nine burly dudes go all out, using every ounce of their strength to lift this behemoth onto the scale. So they manage to get him on the scale without breaking and now everyone's on edge. Waiting for the results. Thank the heavens. The damn thing holds up. The tests show no brain bleeding, no strokes, no swelling, nada. It's mind-boggling. Everyone's scratching their heads, wondering what the hell is going on. He wakes the hell up after two days. He's freaking out, flailing around like a maniac. And boom, the poor machine can't handle his wild antics and gets wrecked. Talk about a major malfunction. It takes a damn army to pull this dude out. Struggling to understand why he went into a coma and woke up just like that. And to top it off, all the test results come back normal. So now this fat dude suddenly decides he wants to piece out of the hospital. He's like, I ain't even sick. I'm just a bit chunky. But the doctor ain't having none of that. But you know what this fat dude does? He throws a tantrum, slamming his utensils on the floor like a spoiled brat. Next day rolls around, and Mr. Chubbs is ready to dip. As soon as he stands up and takes a couple of steps, he gets hit with a dizzy spell and plummets to the ground like a sack of potatoes. 
A six-year-old boy's hands were burdened with a monstrous five-kilogram mass of excess flesh. The sight left the doctors dumbfounded. Upon closer examination, the boy's palms had become a breeding ground for a sinister condition known as chondrosarcoma. As the doctors grappled with the grim reality, they reluctantly concluded that amputation was the only glimmer of hope. Despite facing such a daunting prospect, the young boy remained remarkably resilient. Will I still carry They rallied the hospital's most exceptional minds, striving to salvage the boy's precious hands. It seemed like a brilliant plan, yet the true horrors were far from anyone's imagination. The cancer had insidiously invaded the young boy's hand bones. The doctors were stunned, unable to find a single intact finger bone, as the nurse gingerly reached for the amputation tools, ready to carry out the irreversible act. The doctor's gaze met her hand, and he quickly ordered everyone to halt. Driven by unwavering determination, the doctors embarked on a desperate quest. Tirelessly, they they scoured every inch of the boy's ravaged hands. Finally, amidst the depths of the malignant growth, they stumbled upon a glimmer of salvation a healthy bone amidst the chaos. The dude was covered head to toe in branches, and after the doctor examined him, they found out it was some crazy plant virus. That virus was spreading like wildfire, and if they didn't act fast, he'd end up turning into a full-on tree dude. The doctor couldn't figure out how the hell he got this disease, but the guy spilled the beans, saying when he was a kid, he got his foot scratched up by a damn tree branch. After it healed, he noticed these hard lumps popping up, but he thought it was just scabs and never bothered to see a doctor. Next thing he knows, his whole body is covered in branches making walking a challenge. All he wanted now was to be a regular dude again. But the doctor hustled the guy into the oar, ready to chop off those branches from his body. But those branches were so tough that even a hammer couldn't make a dent. They had to bust out an electric saw and slice them off, then yank them out with forceps. Because those branches had fused with the guy's tissues, the whole cleaning process was a real pain in the ass. After a few hours of intense battle, they managed to collect two buckets full of those trimmed branches. After the successful surgery, the dude could walk again, but he still needed a second surgery to get rid of the tissues on his face. He was stoked, because he'd been looking forward to this day for ages. Finally, he could grab that remote control himself and flip on the TV. Such a simple thing, but it had been his damn childhood dream. He felt like life was full of hope and all that jazz. A few days later, the doctor performed the second surgery, aiming to wipe out the rest of the nasty tissues in the guy's body. After a few rounds of scrubbing, the guy finally got rid of that branchy torment. All he had to do was wait for the wounds to scab over, and he'd be back to being a regular dude. But damn, he couldn't find any damn joy. He pulled up his pants, the spot where he got cut as a kid started acting up again, and this time it was spreading faster than ever. The poor guy's mood went straight down the crapper, going from hope to pure despair. It made him feel like life just wasn't worth living anymore.